Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're gonna look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media, it's for groups, it's for personal devotion, it's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Inspiration Church, good morning and welcome home. Today, you are in the place to be. Listen, guys, we got two great events going on today. Number one, Inspiration Church has been open for three years. Woo! Come on, guys. How exciting is that? Our church has been loving, living, and leading for three years. Guys, it has been an amazing journey. And so today, that's one. But the second is today is Pastor Carlos's 10th year anniversary of ministry. And so we thank God, number one, for allowing Inspiration Church to see three years and then for allowing our men of God to be in his 10th year anniversary. Hey, guys, listen, because it's our anniversary, Inspiration Church has some really great things lined up for you. Matter of fact, right now, as you're in this pre-service, we have a chef who's going to be chefing with us all month. And she's going to be blessing us with some amazing dishes that we can make during quarantine. Matter of fact, right now you can check her out. Here's Chef Dimitri. Good morning, all you great, grand, wonderful individuals out there in the universe. My name is Chef Dimitri. I'm the owner of the Starving Gypsy here in South Austin. And this morning, we're going to make African pancakes, aka European crates. So, for this, we have AP flour, we have half a cup of sugar, oh, it's actually two cups of flour. We have three eggs, there's only two in here because I have large eggs, so if you have jumbo or large eggs, you can use two. If you have medium to just regular size eggs, use three. And we have a cup of milk and a cup of water, because we're gonna use both of those liquids, and you are free to use any kind of milk and if you want to use like any kind of nut based milk or something like that if you can't have regular dairy it'll still work out the same way and we have about three tablespoons of oil that we're only going to use for frying so you, you're probably not going to go through all of that oil but that's what we got it for so let's start mixing some things so we're going to combine our flour and our sugar and go ahead and mix together those dries first. And then we're going to add our eggs. And we want to break up those yolks and mix those in. And then when you see it start to become like a little pasty from the yolks, like combining with all of your dries, then we'll slowly start adding in the rest of our liquid that we have. So this batter is going to get eh, relatively thick, like regular pancake batter, but it will be a lot easily more easily spreadable because it's going to we're not going to put as much 
in the pan because it's going to be like crepe so it's going to be nice and thin and because it has at least a half a cup of sugar in it it'll have a little bit of sweetness to it so you can also just like with the german pancake pair it with something savory pair it with something sweet you can go whichever way that you want to go because it has sugar in it but not too much sugar that it'll overtake it but traditionally for african pancakes they're normally covered in like powdered sugar and a little bit of cinnamon which is probably what we're going to do today but feel free to top it with whatever you like because it can go either way so you want to whisk it mix it until you get majority of the lumps out so that it's nice and smooth and i'll get a spoon so you can see what that looks like so this is kind of the consistency that you want where it's nice and runny but it still has some body to it but it's not overly thick so that it can coat the pan pretty evenly when we start to use it on the oven so now that we got that mixed I'll go ahead and take some of this oil and I'm going to put it in a pan so it can get really hot. And I'll show you guys. We're going to swirl that around there so that it coats the whole pan. And we're going to take our bowl. about three tablespoons of batter to the pan and you want it to thin out from what it is right now so I'm going to swirl it around some and we're going to cook it for about two to three minutes on both sides and you want it to get nice and brown but it can burn really easily, so you gotta watch it because it's so thin, it won't take too long to get brown. So that's why two to three minutes on medium heat is roughly a good time to go for it. So I am going to roll these. You can keep them flat or you can roll them. Um, I would not suggest doing it barehanded like I'm doing it like a crazy person. You'll probably burn yourself. But um, I have calluses and kitchen hands. So just allow me to do that. And I'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon here. And we'll add a little syrup. And again, you can make it savory, you can make it sweet, you can go in whatever direction that you want to go in. But uh, those are your African pancakes, aka European crepes, ladies and gentlemen. They're super simple to make, they don't take that long. They're going to cook, it'll take you like maybe five minutes to mix all your batter and take you about a good five minutes, two and a half on one side, two and a half on another side to actually cook them. And that's it. Your breakfast is done. <laughs>
have on. This is our shirt that we just created, but we still have some amazing pieces. And later on in the service, I'm going to show them, but I want you to grab some church merch so that we can look in the same unison and people will know that Inspiration Church is our church home. And then guys, we want to make sure that you understand and know everything that we have going on in the community. Right now, we have some really amazing things. We're in the prisons talking to those who are prisoners and we're making sure that we stay in contact with them as they go through this time. And also we are getting ready to connect with Relief Gang. We're getting ready to connect with Angels by Nature and we're going to be sending out some supplies to Lake Charles and to the Cameron areas, those areas of Louisiana that were hit hardest. Hey, listen, if you want to join us or if you want to be able to donate into what we have going on, you know, I'll give you three ways to give, excuse me. Those three ways to give are number one, our cash app, which is dollar sign Inspiration Church. The second way to give is through our website. You can go to www.yourinspirationnow.com and click the donate tab. Or if you're our member, you can go on our app, Fellowship One Go, and you can give that way. So we want to make sure that you all stay connected, but not only do you stay connected, but that you're able to pour into the lives of those who need it most. Hey guys, earlier I spoke about Pastor Carlos going into his 10 years. Now let me tell you something about ministry. Ministry is not easy. And so to have anything more than a year or two in ministry, that means that God has blessed you and God is advancing you. And so right now, I want to show you guys a clip of 10 years of Pastor Carlos preaching, teaching, and pastoring the Word of God. It's 2015. What? The year of the ideas and dreams. We can't be scared with God on our team. All faith and no fear. This year, we're going to live out our dreams. We feel this. This year we feel it. This year we feel it. This year we feel it. Do you hear this? I said this year we feel it. This year we feel it. This year, this year, this year we feel it. I say this year I'm feeling. You better know. This year I'm feeling. Oh, this year I'm feeling. Oh, this year I'm feeling. Oh, this year I'm feeling. This year we feel it. We gon' write that book. This year we feel it. We gon' start that business. This year we feel it. Cutting down my friends list. This year we feel it. We gon' start gaining interest. I'm fearless. Moving out my mama house. This year I'm fearless. I'm getting off of that couch. This year I'm fearless. I'm fearless. This year I'm fearless, I'ma stop being lazy This year I'm fearless, I'ma stop going crazy I'm fearless, you fearless, we fearless, we fearless. This year we fearless, this year we fearless This year we fearless Do you hear this? I said this year we fearless This year we fearless This year, this year, this year we fearless I say this year I'm fearless, this year I'm fearless. The year of the idea and dream With God on our side Nobody can stop us So I'm not scared of nothing I'm going through walls I'm tearing through struggles I'm torn through y'all I'm feeling You feel it We feel it I'm feeling You feel it We feel it I'm feeling it Follow me at the way underscore I see. Wow. Glory to God for our man of God. I want to thank God for blessing us with Pastor Carlos II, who is our visionary. And we thank God for his vision. Pastor Carlos comes up with some amazing things and some amazing ideas. And you all see them after they come into fruition. But we're behind scenes when we're developing them. And we thank him for his heart. And we thank him for his leadership. Guys, right now, I want you to grab your kiddos. That's the children in elementary, middle school, and also high school. Go to our YouTube page right now. Pastor Chris has an amazing message for the youth. You can go to YouTube right now at Inspiration Church and look at that youth video. Well, guys, we're getting ready to go into service. Today is going to be a fun-filled, exciting service. Why? Because God has blessed us to be here in this church three more years. Man, if you're as excited as I am, get ready 
to go into service. Let's jam out a little bit. It's our anniversary. Three years. Yeah, yeah. Three years. Come on. Say it. Yeah. Three years. You say it right where you are. Three years. Come on. Three years. Just keep going. Three years. Yeah. Three years. Three years. Hey, guys. It's our three-year anniversary, and we're excited to have you here with us this morning. Oh, man. God has blessed us to see three more years. So just vibe out and rock with us for a little bit. Right now, just type three. Just type three. Fill up the chat with three. Go three, 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 three. Give a little roll and three, 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 three. Let me share a little something with you. It's something so good about that number three, man. Something so good about that number three. Allen Iverson was the number three. And they said he was the answer. Ah, they were wrong. Ah, they were wrong. See, because I know the true answer. He sat on the cross for more than three hours. He had three nails in his hands and feet. He was there for us, for our sins. He's connected to the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's something about the number three. But most importantly, on the third day, come on, get excited. On the third day, he rose again. And so, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you that you're good. Father, we thank you for blessing us with three years, my God. There's a song that says, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good, somebody say good, and perfect comes from you. I want to rest on that word good this morning because God has been good to us in and throughout our lives. He's been good to us even here at Inspiration Church. Makes me think of this verse, Psalms 84 and 11. No good thing will I withhold from him who walks up like me. All good things come from the Father. So whether you're facing something and it doesn't look good, I'm here today to tell you that all things work together for the good. And so that's the bad, the myth, the muck of our lives. He's working it for good. Somebody say good. So Father, we thank you for these three years that you have blessed us with. They have been good. Father, we thank you for this morning that you have blessed us with. It is good. Father, we thank you for our lives and we thank you for allowing us to have the chance to know and understand who you are and receive salvation, it's good. So right now, Father, we just worship you for your goodness. Father, we honor you because everything you do is good and is perfect. You never make a mistake. You don't roll dice. Father, you're too good to be bad and you're too wise to make a mistake. So today we praise you for your goodness. Father, we honor you and we love you. Father, right now we just 
open up our hearts and we consecrate our minds to you right now, Father. It's not about us. It's not about our days. It's not about what we have to do. But this is the moment in our lives when we worship you. Father, we move everything that we have going on and we take this time to laser in tunnel vision on who you are. Jesus, we see you in the songs. We see you in the scriptures. We see you when we listen to the word. So, Father, today I just pray that as you make everything good, you touch this service. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill this room. I pray that you would fill these vessels. I pray, Father, that the very thing, the very purpose, the very reason that you have created us for, in today we fulfill it. Father, when it's all said and done, I pray that you look at us and you say good. Come on, somebody shout good. You say good. Father, you're good and you're perfect. Father, you're mighty and you're holy. And we love you, Father, not for what you do, but Father, for who you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's worship the Lord. He's a good, good Father. He's a good, good Father. Yeah, yeah. You're a good, good Father in every situation. You're a good, good Father. Oh, you're not looking for perfection. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. It simply says, You love with no reservations. You're not looking for perfection. There's no need for me pretending I'll give you everything I'll give you everything You deserve my full attention Hallelujah Nothing less than my devotion Speak to me and I will listen I'll give you everything, I'll give you everything, oh, 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 you can have my heart, you can, say oh, 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 you can have my heart. Selfless motive. I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. Oh, 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 oh. You can have my heart. You can. You can have my heart. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. If you 
want my heart you got it you got it you got it if you want my heart you got it you got it let me say if you want my heart you got it you got it you got it say if you want my heart you got it you got it you got it if you want my heart you got it every part every part if you want my heart If you want my heart, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. You want my heart. Yeah. 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 One more time. Oh, you got it. If you want my heart, you want my heart. So you got it. You got it. Every part of it. You got it. And the part that I don't you like, got say. If you want my heart, you got it. You got it. Last time, if you want. If you want my heart, you got it. You got it. You got it if you want my heart. You got it. Hey, say, oh, 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 you can have my heart. You can have my heart. Come on, wherever you are, just hit your hand and say, worthy father and we thank you that you're worthy that all things everything all things all things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose I've been pastoring for 10 years 10 years 10 10 years that's that's 520 Sundays. That's 520 weeks. And that's over 30,000 hours of leading on God's team. And I am grateful. I am thankful. I am honored. I am humbled. I don't know how I did it, but I know that I couldn't have did it without him. And I'm so thankful that I have been able to serve not only with you people at Inspiration Church, the people of the Way Into Denominational Church, New Faith Church, um, all of the places that I have preached at, that I've ministered at, and that I've been on the roster as a pastor. I thank you guys for honoring uh, those moments. I've definitely learned a lot, a lot, a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole, a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole, I have learned I have learned what it, what it feels like to have people join in on the mission on your church's team. I've learned what it means to have people leave. I, I've learned what it means to have all of the bills paid, and I know what it feels like when it doesn't look like it's going to last. I've, I've been through on the verge of quitting and giving up, and I've been on the other side while I was excited to be on God's team. I have learned to be content in all seasons, whether there's much or whether there's little, whether the crowd is full or whether it's just one. I have learned that God is going to supply all of my needs, all of your needs, according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And see, that scripture to a two-year-old means nothing. But when you get my age and you get a little grays in your beard, you understand that 
that God is always going to supply. Even when you think man has failed you, God will always supply. I remember, I remember uh, counting on people early on in ministry. They're going to be here at this time, or they're going to they're gonna be able to, to be on, on this particular place or that platform, or they're going to assist me here, or they're going to help set up. I have been let down. Yeah. But guess what? Even when I was let down, the word of God still went forth. Even when I was let down, whatever mission God had put me on, it still was completed. So it means that no man can step in the way of what God has for you. And sometimes you have rainy days. But the great thing about rainy days is that when the sun comes out, growth happens. And so I've grown over these 10 years. I realize now why pastors, you'll see pastors get up there and they're old and they just start talking. I understand what it means, but they don't have no filter. They don't care about how you feel because they like, you know what? If I placate you and I have, if I love on you, you'll still leave me. So guess what? I'm just going to tell you the truth anyway. I understand it. I didn't understand it early on, but I understand what it means when it says the truth will make you free because it won't have you in prisons. I have, I have learned a lot. And I'm so thankful for a praise team. Guys, when we first started out, and there's a video, we didn't have a praise team, we had a YouTube. I think that was when YouTube was first starting out, and we would play the song, we had to make sure that it was, it was going, and click this and run over there, but now to have fully staffed band, musicians, to have singers, to have a media team. I used to be the media team, the choir director, the musicians, the sound tech, the audience and preaching all at the same time. And so I am thankful that I can walk into a room. I can, I don't have to be the first one there anymore. I can come late, not late, but I can come after everybody else is there. And just to see what God is doing, it means that God has put me onto something because he has provided, he has expanded, he has grown. And, and I remember starting out with no salary. I remember starting out doing this for free and not, not telling people don't give me anything to now. We employ over 15 people. We're taking care of families. We are taking care of people. And that's something to, to bless God about that here I was at the beginning. I think we took in, I remember the first month that uh, uh, I started pastoring, I think we took in $300 in, and I was with the, uh, the finance team, which was my mom at the time. And we, we was thanking God. We brought in $300, praise God. And now we're looking at closer to $30,000 uh, a, a month. God has taken us. He is, that's that number three, three, three. He has, he has taken that, that number to another, another level. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. So praise team, thank you all so much. You guys can take your seats. Ben, I won't be too long, so stay with me. Um, because I, I believe there's a lot, a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of things that uh, are in the midst of this. I have learned a few things uh, in passion. I want to I wanna share some of the things that I have, have learned. Y'all got, got some time? You don't have anywhere to go, right? I've got some time today to kind of talk about what, what God has done uh, in the midst of, of these years of pastoring. And, and before I even go into my scripture, I want, to, I want to leave you with some nuggets. I was up the other morning and I was praying uh, about, God, what have you shown me over these years? And I've always written lessons down. And I want to share with you some of these lessons that I've learned. Uh, number one, the people that say they love you when they first meet you will leave you when they find another love. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to, to deposit that in your spirit. The people that come, they be like, oh, I'm so in love with you. Oh, you are all the desires of my heart. Oh, your ministry is great. Oh, those will be the same people that will leave you. Number two, codependency will kill a pastor's time and the church's vision. You can never surround yourself with people that are codependent because it makes you feel good because it will destroy your time and it will destroy God's vision. Number three, don't help people to gain members. Then your church will look like a bunch of people that need your help. Just help because it's needed. I know early on I would do anything. I would get the water. I would pay a bill. I'd pick up. I would drop off. I would do all of those things. But in the midst of that, I would see that the same people that I would help, and I was like, if I helped them, maybe they'd help us build. That, uh, that didn't always turn out that way. And so God has shown me, don't help to gain members. Just help because it's needed. Number four, 
You're only as good as your readers, what you're reading, your leaders, and your mentors. If you don't have sound people, great people around you, then you will not be able to grow and you will be stuck in a place of being stuck. Number five, action is great, but a plan with action will yield long-lasting results. When I was young, I would get an idea and I would do it the next day. Boom, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But I've learned over these years of, of pastoring that Action is great, but a plan, a plan with action will yield long-lasting results. Number six, I've learned don't take it personal. Don't take it personal when people may not value your time. Don't take it personal when people leave you. People only leave you when it's time for them to leave. And so when it's time, God will remove them, but you don't take it personal. I think even in the scripture, uh, uh, Jesus, he told the disciples, he says, don't, don't, don't take it personal that they're persecuting you. They're actually persecuting me. And so he took the blame for us. He took the shame for us. Uh, number seven, I am a black pastor. And what works for white pastors doesn't necessarily work for black pastors. And so I have learned that I cannot mimic, even though a ministry may be doing well or may be doing great, I cannot be anything other than what I am. Number eight, diversity is, it's not sought after. If your friend circles are diverse, then your church will be diverse. If your friend circles are not diverse, then your church will not be diverse. And you can't put in a diversity plan to say this is how we're going to become diverse. It's either in you or it's not. Number nine. If you should have did it, then you still should do it. If you should have did it back then, you still to this day should do it. Number 10, being a pastor is one role. It's not the only role. And I've learned that I'm not going to put all of my confidence. I'm not going to put all of my faith. I'm not going to put all of my energy. I'm not going to put all of my uh, resources and, and all of my, my pride and my emotions and all of those things into one place because I believe that God has said that this is a role, not all roles. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Uh, I'm a business owner. Uh, I'm a son. I'm a friend. There are so many different things, and I have to make sure that I am well-rounded and not just placating myself as pastor. Number 11, it's always family before those that will forsake you. And what I mean by that is that if you always put your family last, those people that you're putting your family last for are going to be the people that leave you, and they'll be the people that have robbed you, and you'll have the people that have been there with you from the beginning, starving for whatever it is that you're supposed to give them because you've given it out, casting your pearls amongst swine. Number 12, if people only love you because of what you do for them, then you have a service relationship, and the minute that you stop service, your service will be out of service. And so I believe that God has shown me in this season that uh, if people are only coming to you for what you can give them, then those people are, are, are there for you to service them, but those are not real friends. Number 13, make your name better than your credit. I don't care if your credit is 500. Your name better be better than your credit. If you got an 820 score, bless God, but your name needs to be better than your credit. Number 15, 14. If you are in ministry, the devil will always attack your weaknesses. If you're doing anything, if you are helping somebody, if you're following God's voice, if you are uh, helping folks, whatever it is that you are doing in your life, if you're in ministry, the devil will attack your weaknesses. And number 15, the ministry will operate without you. Never think that you are too big are too small for God's ministry because God was here before you, God's going to be here after you, and God is going to fulfill the very thing that God has put inside of you. And so those are just a few of the nuggets, and we'll be dropping them all month, and I'm thankful that you've been able to, to join in with this, this particular phase and this particular thing in ministry. Uh, there are many other things that I've learned, but I just wrote those down and wanted to share those with you this morning. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for 520 Sundays. I thank you for 520 weeks. God, I thank you, Lord, for over 30,000 hours of, of helping and serving and doing what you've called me to do in ministry, Father. And I thank you, Father, that this is, this is my last. If this is it, if it's over, Father, if this is the last of the Mohicans, Father, it's been a good ride. It's been great, Father, and I can die going to, to, to heaven saying that I've never seen the righteous forsaken 
or his seed begging bread. Father, you've always provided for me. You've always provided for those that are around me. You've always uh, sown into me, Father. You've always made sure that there was no lack. You've always provided a ram in the bush, Father. You always showed me a different side of you that I've never seen, Father. You always gave me vision, Father. You always helped me when I was broken, God. You always healed me, Father. You always kept me, God. You kept me when I thought I was lost. God, you preserved me when I thought I was old, Father. You kept me. And I thank you, God, for keeping me in all things, in all seasons, and at all times. In Jesus' name, amen. Band, if y'all could come back on up. There will be some moments in here where I need your help. Uh, there will be some times when we need the drums to play. There will be some times when we need the guitar to go. There will be some different moments in this message. And I want to make sure that we have full authority, that we have uh, full uh, 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 um I just want to make sure everything is on, on point. I am believing God that he is, he is going to speak uh, this morning, that he is going to give uh, a leadership, that he's going to give direction. And I want to preach uh, from the book of Acts, but then I want to jump over to Psalms 121. And, and we've been walking through the book of Acts, and if you've been uh, carrying, uh, uh, keeping up and walking along with this in chapter 12 and 13, in 12 and 13, this is where uh, there is uh, Peter. Peter goes to prison, and as he's in prison, uh, he has this vision, and God uh, wakes Peter up, and Peter then leaves out of the prison. God releases him from prison, and we see that uh, he thought it was a vision, and we see that the people were praying for Peter. And as Peter is embarking upon this leadership position, God has always kept him, whether it was in prison, whether it was out of prison, whether he was speaking to 10,000 or whether he was speaking to one. If he was speaking to 100, he was in the midst and God kept him all of the way. I I know in in some churches, uh, and this is one of the hardest things about preaching in a church where there is no audience, preaching in a church where there is no call and response, but in normal churches, Protestant churches, churches, non-denominational churches, uh, African-American churches, churches with a lot of energy, there is always a call and response. Everybody knows Miss Patty. We miss Miss Patty. Uh, we can see her sometimes down in the chat, but we miss those people that give you good feedback, and it's, it's that call and response. It's, it's that person that says, oh, that's good, preacher. Oh, you walking tall. Oh, you in my corner. Oh, you're stepping on my toes. It's those types of things that, that give us energy, and we, 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 those are signals to know that we're headed in the right direction when we're preaching, and we know that when we have that call and, and response, then it, 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 it keeps the energy going. And sometimes we, we, we have a conversation with the audience and, and having a conversation with the camera is totally different. But I believe that, that as God uses this uh, monologue, as God uses this one-way uh, conversation, I pray that it is touching your soul, that it enters into your spirit, and that it, it makes you grow stronger in your bones. And in one Psalms 121, we see that the, uh, the psalmist and the person that's, that's writing this, that's reading this, that's, that's being able to vocalize this, he's standing at the bottom of a mountain. And he looks around and he's, he's looking at all the, the beauty and he's looking at all of the great things and all of the majestic things. And he has this, this conversation with himself. He says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. And then he asks himself, he says, where does my help come from? And then he answers himself and he says, my help comes from the Lord. See, he, he hasn't even started on the journey yet, but he is, he's getting himself ready to be able to go on this voyage. And he looks around and he says, I got to look at all of this, this majestic, this beauty, uh, uh, all of the crests and all of the valleys and, and all of the nooks and all of the crannies. And oh, this is beautiful in the sky. And he's saying that this mountain is strong, it's big, it's massive. And he says to himself, well, where does my help come from? I see that the mountain is planted on solid ground. He says, but where does my help come from? And right then the Holy Spirit speaks and he says, my help comes from the Lord. Not only is God your helper, but he's also your keeper. Type this in below. He's been keeping me. He's been keeping me. He's been keeping me. I, I, here recently, I've started to invest in, in stocks. Well, not stocks, but stock options. And I've been learning a lot uh, about that. And I've been putting all of the people that are on around me uh, because I've gotten a hold to some good information. And it's, it, it can also re- replace income. And I'm always thinking forward. I'm always thinking not only how can I bless other people spiritually, but how can I help build things physically. And uh, God has given me this nugget. And, and in this group that I'm in, uh, one of the, the things that is stated or one of the things that is said is, is 
one of the guys says, it, do you have diamond hands? Now, diamond hands is being able to hold on something long enough, even when it looks scary, Pastor Jordan. It looks like that it's scary. It looks like uh, you're going to, to lose it. It looks like you're not going to, to be able to make it. And what happens is, is when you're looking at stock options, you'll buy the option and you'll, you'll trade the option. But, but sometimes it'll go down. Sometimes you'll lose money. Sometimes you'll lose all of the money that you have invested. And it says as long as you have diamond hands, you'll know that that thing is about to come back up. It, 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 sometimes it will, what they call at the end of the contract, once it expires, they said that it's worthless. And sometimes it will look like your contract is about to appear worthless. But guess what? If you can have diamond hands, you can hold on to that thing because you know that it's precious. You know that it can return value. You know that it can return growth. You know that it can expand itself. You know that it can go into a different space and sphere and so you have to have diamond hands to hold on to something long enough that it be valuable even when it looks invaluable and this is what God does to us even in our lives when we appear worthless when we appear like we're out of the money when we appear that we have no value he says I'm holding you as a diamond because I know that just because you're down today you will be up tomorrow I remember in preaching and pastoring when I thought that the numbers would be down and one Sunday it may be a few people but the next Sunday it would be be more. God has shown me that even on this rock of our baby scale, that even on the ups and the valleys, even on the mountains and the crests and the pinnacles, even in the, uh, the shadow of, of the valley of the shadow of death, even in my darkest places, I know that it won't end in the darkness, but God is going to bring me to the light. He says that he is light. And since he is light, he has illuminated this world. And I'm so thankful that even when the sun goes up and the, and the moon comes up and takes his place, that God is still in control. He is keeping us in his hand. Anybody, has God been keeping you through this coronavirus pandemic? Has God been keeping you in the midst of unemployment? Has God been keeping you in the midst of, I don't have any food, food steps have run out? Is God keeping you when you were laid off? Is God keeping you? Tape in below. God is keeping me. If I had some keys right there, boy, it would have been great. If I had to, if I had some wings. But guess what? We're going to get it because I know that God is He's keeping me. He says, where does my help come from? He says, it comes from the Lord. And then he validates it. He says, he's the maker of heaven and earth. I trust his builder. I, I go into some neighborhoods and uh, you can see neighborhoods that are, that are built up very well. And you say, oh, those, those are Perry homes. Or, or you go into another place and you say those are, are Highlands homes. Or, or you may see H.D. Uh, 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 Morton or, or whatever their names are. You'll see these names. And, and sometimes when you look at these names, it'll give validity to the neighborhood. When you see Perry homes, you're like, oh, this is, this is built with some quality. This is, this is built with some, some good cement. This is built with some, some good uh, architecture. There is some good building in this neighborhood, and I'm willing to pay a little bit more because I know who built the home. But I'm telling you today that even in the church and even over these 10 years, I know that God is the maker of every home. And I know that when I walk into the favor of God, when I walk into the place of God, it's not me who's building it, but it's God. And as long as God is the foundation, as long as God is the walls, as long as God has the roof, guess what? Your house will never fall. I don't care if there's an abusive relationship on the inside. I don't care if there's an addiction season. I don't care if you're a broken season. I don't care if there's a, a near-death experience. Guess what? God's house will, will stand. The, uh, the author, he goes on in the scripture and he goes into verse 3, which is now verse 3 in, in your Bibles, and he says, he will not let your foot slip. See, in mountains, there are some areas where there may be a little bit of moisture because as you ascend up a mountain, the climate changes, the air changes, the, the elements change. And as the elements change in the midst of going up, there can be condensation where, where you go. And he says, as you're going up this mountain, I'm going up on the rough side of the mountain because if you went up on the smooth side, you'll never make it. So as you go up on the rough side of the mountain, he says, he will not let your foot slip. Sometimes people trip. Some people's foot, times people fall. But he says he is there. He's the maker of them all. He said he's going to keep you. He said he's going to, to, to help you. Your help comes from the Lord. He says he's going to keep your foot from slipping. And as he's talking to himself, he said he who watches over you will not slumber. I'm so glad that he doesn't take any breaks, that he doesn't 
take any naps. I have to take a nap. My, my kids, sometimes I'm watching baby Carson and I have to close my eyes for a little bit and I'm hearing for things, but my God never has to close his eyes. He, he doesn't operate on the same energy because he's, he is energy. He doesn't operate with the same uh, um, uh, 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 battery that I have. His battery doesn't end out. Matter of fact, he gives a source of energy to everything that's around us. And when he watches over us, he says he will not slumber. He says, indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And he says, the Lord watches over you. I can attest that over my 30 plus years of, of walking with God, 10 years of pastoring, 15 years of preaching, uh, all of the times that I've been in ministry and going through college and playing football, I know that God has always watched over me. I remember growing up in a neighborhood and we had a group called the Untouchables and we all played football together and, and certain things hit other people in the group, but it didn't hit me. Anybody that's a testament to you that, that you've been around some situations and some places where you should have been uh, drugged up with an addiction or you should have been laying in a hospital bed or you should have been paralyzed or you should have been taken out or you should have been shot by that bullet. You was involved in gang activity. You was involved with the wrong people. But guess what? God says, I got diamond hands. I am going to watch over them and I am going to keep you from slipping. He says, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. You know, have you ever, ever tried to cover up yourself and, and make sure that the sun doesn't hit you at a certain element in a certain moment and you put, put the shade up? He says, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. He says, the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He says, I am God and I am going to protect you from the elements. That even in the daytime, see, when you're going uh, on voyages back then, sometimes people, they would have robbers that would come out and jump you and, and take all of the things and your valuables and your silvers and steal your purses and steal the things that you have uh, with you. And then there's other times where you may not see danger and there may be an animal out there. It may be a lion or it, it may be a, a caravan of, of people trying to come get you. He says he is not going to allow you to be harmed under the sun. And then he says, nor by the moon by night. You know that uh, at nighttime things happen. People uh, that, that, that walk in, in the nighttime, that is where the, uh, uh, Houdini said the people come out at night. Because it's at the nighttime where uh, the lunar, it, it pulls on us. And, and sometimes when it's a full moon, people get crazy because there are some things that are happening. He says that even in the nighttime, he says the Lord will keep you from all harm. And then he ends it off and he says, he will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and he will watch over your going. He says, both now and forevermore. See, when you can trust in God, he will keep your mind stable. Anybody ever been uh, around some unstable creatures? That's what we're going to call them, unstable Creatures, people that just, you know, we got, we got some folks that are on the TV that live uh, uh, on Pennsylvania Ave that are a little unstable. They'll say anything. They'll do anything. They'll, they'll, they won't check themselves. They'll say that we have very fine people over here and then call other people SOBs. They will do certain things because they are unstable in their minds. And I'm grateful that that's not the example of leadership of my God in heaven because God gives us great stability that we know that he's never going to change. As the old folks say, he is the same today as he was yesterday and the same forevermore. That if he did it back then, then he'll do it again. If he did it for me, I know that he'll do it for you, but you gotta have diamond hands. Just like he's holding us, we gotta hold on to our faith because if we drop it when things get loose, then we'll wind up losing out on the great gains that'll come on the other side. And I believe that as God is walking through us, as God covers us, as God has kept this church for three years, as he's kept the ministry going, uh, the ministry he started in me over 10 years, as he kept my dad, as he kept my grandfather and grandmother and great-grandfather, as he's going to keep my sons and grandsons and great-grandsons, that my God is going to keep my family stable. Second thing that God will do is he'll keep you sane. Insanity happens when you don't have anything to hold on to. Anybody ever felt like you were about to lose your mind because there was so much going on and it seemed like things were just rolling and things were, were coming out of nowhere? It felt like you were caught up in a hurricane or a tornado and things were going on. The Bible says that he is my rock and he's my salvation. He is my strong foundation. 
And so when we believe that God is going to keep us sane, he's saying that even when tumultuous times come around us, he's going to keep our mind set level. That even when anger comes out, it'll be that still small voice that say, don't pop off. Don't go there. Even when you want to go ride on them, even when you want to go slash the windows and bust the windows out of their car, even when you want to go burn the car down and burn the house down, he says he'll keep you sane because you know that vengeance is mine, thus says the Lord. And I'd rather put my trust in the God than any day. I had an interesting thing happen to me this week, and it's a culmination of 10 years. God reached out to me uh, at the beginning of 2019, and he started, hadn't talked to him maybe in almost 20 years, since high school for sure. And uh, he reached out to me, and he started asking me for money. And the first time, I said, okay, you know what? God has blessed me immensely. He's given me overflow. Uh, I, I sent him some money via cash. Hadn't talked to him. He reached out. I don't know what was going on, but I sent him some money because he gave me a story that he tried to get back to his, his family. Uh, he was stuck somewhere, and, and he needed some help to get back home. And I said, okay, no problem, man. I gave him some money. And uh, about three weeks later, he, he sent me another request. Man, I, I, I need to, to keep the, the utilities. I got to pay my, my, uh, my, my renter's insurance. I need some more money. And I said, well, okay. You know, and I gave him some money again. And then the third time, he hit me about two months later. And this time, he didn't even call to ask for money. He just sent me a cash app request. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? And so uh, <laughs> I declined the request. And he hit me up and he was like, you didn't have to decline the request. You could have just let it expire. I said, okay. I said, well, well look, man, I said, we don't want to have, I don't want to have this kind of relationship with you. I said, you know, if there's friendship that you want here, if you, you want some support, I said, come on over to the church. But every time I would invite him to church, it was always something that was going on. The reason that he couldn't make it, it was, it was an excuse after excuse. And then three months later, he hit me with another request. And three months later, he hit me with another request. And it was always something that was in dire needs and dire straits. And he was trying to pull on me. And this time he reached out to me. I didn't respond. He reached out again. I didn't respond. So then he goes to my Facebook page and he's like, call me, I need some help. So now he's going to put me on front street. And so I, I reached out to him. I said, what's going on? He said, I'm stuck in Dallas. I need some help. I'm homeless and I need to get home. I said, it's always something. So at this point, I know that there's something greater going on with this, with this guy, my, my, my childhood friend. or something else that's happening. And I said, what's going on with you? I said, it seems like something is happening with you in the midst of this season that, uh, that, that you need some help. It's more than just $20 here, $20 there. There's something that happened that has happened, and you keep winding up homeless. There's something that's going on with you. And uh, he began to, to speak. I said, man, send me your parents' address and phone number so I can go talk to them to find out what's the backstory because I want to help you, but I don't just want to give you an immediate help and you still be struggling with this, this thing that you got going on. And so he, he said, man, you're doing too much. Now, he asked me for money. And he tell me, I'm doing too much. So I said, yeah, I am doing too much. You're trying to be one of my kids. I got three kids I'm responsible for and a wife that I got to supply for. Nowhere in the Bible says that I need to supply for other folks. I said, he will supply, but I don't have to supply all of your needs according to his race. So, so we had Tuesday morning prayer, and some of you might have been joining on Facebook, but he gets on the Facebook prayer line, and he blasts me. Yeah, Carlos ain't giving me no money. He going to keep me out here uh, messed up, and yeah, what, what kind of pastor is this that's not going to help somebody out? And I said, whoa, but God will keep you stable, and he'll keep you sane, because 2010, Carlos, would have drove to Dallas. I would have picked up Mark. We would have gone on. <laughs> But, so I, I blocked them, deleted the, you know, the good thing is you don't have to keep stuff up on Facebook, so I deleted the messages. And so I told him, I said, look, man, I said, hey, I said, you never thanked me publicly when I gave you money. I said, I've given you almost $100. Never did you go to my Facebook or come on a prayer and say, Pastor Carlos is a great man. He helped me when I was without. I said, but the moment that I tell you no, you want to go and publicly try to embarrass me and erase my name? And I said, you know what? Don't worry about help. I'm not sending help, and I'm not going to give you help, but you got an issue. At this point, he threatens my family. He said, you know what? When I come back to Houston, I'm going to come. You better have your hands ready and your strap on you because you and that B sparkle, my wife don't like her anyway. We're coming to get you. Now, back in the day in 2010, when I had just started out, Malcolm, it would have been a very different response. I was fresh off the football field. I was fresh off the weights. I was fresh in a, in a place where 
I wasn't going to let anybody disrespect me or my family. But even in the moment when he said that he was coming to take my life, I said, man, God needs to help you. I'm going to pray with you. And I'm going to ask that God bless you. I said, but I'm going to notify the sheriff about this because I don't, I don't fight anymore. I said, I know too many people in high places. And then he responded differently. He said, I just need some help. I said, no, bro. <laughs> but God will keep you stable and he'll keep you sane. And so that day I went home and I showed it to my wife. And she was like, what? And at the moment, we began to, to pray internally, and we, we prayed for him, but afterwards, he'll keep you smiling. That's the third one. He'll keep you smiling, that even when adversity happens, he'll still give you cheer. He'll still give you joy. He'll still allow you to smile all the way that, through that thing. Because when you believe the Word of God, when you walk on the Word of God, and you walk in faith with the Word of God, I promise you that God is going to allow you to be stable. He's going to keep you sane, and he's going to keep you smiling. Because the Bible says that he will give you the joy of the Lord. And he says, the joy of the Lord shall be your, your strength. See, in this, in this book, this book provides soul food. Type that down before the low. Soul food. Soul food, it, it, it comes into the soul, and, 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 and the Hebrew word is called nephesh. And if you look at this in the Hebrew, you'll see nephesh, you'll see it repeated over and over again. And, and the soul or the nephesh means activation and motivation for the whole part of the individual, meaning that it, it activates and it motivates your mind. It activates and it motivates your, your spirit. It activates and it motivates your body. It activates and it motivates the whole individual. If it gets into your soul, it will start to manifest in different ways. That's why when people in church and they're hearing a good word, they have to stand up or they have to, to move their feet because when the word of God is speaking to your soul, it's going to start doing something. And if you can speak to the soul of a man, you can get a man to raise his hand. If you speak to the soul of a man, you can get a man to shuffle his feet. If you speak to the soul of a man. You can tell him and call him out of football and a career that's promising to do pastoring. When the word of God seeps into your soul, it'll bring a gangbanger off the streets and allow him to lead in pastoral leadership. When you, when you speak to the soul of a person, it'll take a person that was pregnant before they were married to keep the baby and allow him to grow up. When you speak to the soul of a man, even when people may leave you, even when people may forsake you and they come back, you don't say no. You say whatever God has called me to do in this season, I will do it. When it gets into your soul, it will allow you to be restored. That's why Psalms 23 says, he restoreth my soul. And when your soul is restored, you're not asking anybody to give anything to you. You're not asking anybody to deposit anything to you. You're not asking anybody to do anything for you because it's only up to him who restores my soul. I see you eating better. I see you eating good. I see I see you working out and you're walking and you got your Peloton. I see you riding your bike. I see you uh, making sure that you keep your, your, your edges laid. I see you keeping your face moisturized. I see you keeping yourself uh, shaved and clothed. I see you taking your medicines. I see you doing all of these things. But guess what? All of that's good, but it's God who can keep the soul. Man has no control over the soul, but God, with those diamond hands, he holds on to the soul of a man. And we know that God speaks to our soul when we understand who that God is, 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 is the one who gives us pneuma. He gives us breath. He's the one that gives us spirit. When we know that God gives us inspiration, when we know that it's God that gives us power, when we know that it's God that, that moves and is and has our being, when we know it's God, our trust level goes to a different level. And our focus is no longer on what I lack it's not longer or no longer on what I'm trying to strive for. Our struggle and our strain and our thing that we focus on the most is making sure that we please God. And that if this is my last sermon for the 10 years that I've been pastoring or if it's the, the beginning of, of 30 more years, all I want to do is please God. That's it. All I want to do is please God. That's it. Whether it's, 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 it's preaching, whether it's mopping floors, whether it's cutting grass, whether it's, it's, it's hanging up something on the background, whether it's, it's picking up somebody and taking them to school, all I want to do is please God. I'm so thankful that over these last 10 years that I've never missed a, a meal. I've never missed a bill, not because I didn't have the money. 
I've never been without anything. And there's some other people that can attest that when you were walking with God, that God showed you that he would supply as long as you would walk with him by faith. Because I believe him, when you answer the call to Christ Jesus, he is going to make sure that he keeps you in his diamond hands. See, the enemy is going to tell you that you're not good enough. The enemy is going to tell you that you're not ready. The enemy is going to tell you that, that you won't be able to make it. The enemy is going to tell you all of these things. But, but what I know is that the scripture says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. What that means for me is that my dad was walking right with the Lord and, 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 and he never had to beg for bread. And I've been walking with the Lord, and since he was walking with the Lord, I am a generational blessing recipient of being able to walk with the Lord. I am a recipient of not being able or not being in a position where I've had to beg for bread. Now, I've had to ask for some bread, but I've never had to beg somebody to give me anything because my God will supply. And so the same lineage that I got right now, guess what? Carlos, Carson, and Summer will never have to be beggars, but they will be the lenders. I, God has positioned me right now that they will be able to be the bank, that they will be able to supply, that they'll be not only uh, people that have faith that can preach the word of God, but they'll be able to meet needs and change generations. Because that's the blessing of Abraham. That he'll not only fill your soul up and fill your spirit and give you purpose and set you on course for the place that you'll go, whether it's to straight street or whether it's to prison, God is going to make sure that he covers you and he keeps you. Because I believe that when God keeps you, when God preserves you, when he preserves your youth, when I started out, I had hair on my head. And I still got hair. It just looks, makes me look a little older. But in the midst of these times, I can look in the mirror and I say, God, you sure have been good. I wake up in the morning next to my wife that I was going to divorce six months in. And I say, God, you know better than I do. When my kids run in the room and they get in the bed with me and they want me to ride the bikes with them, I say, God, this might not have been so. Because there's a way that seems right to a man. But in the end, it leads to destruction. And have I had some hard days and some tough decisions to make? Yes, I have. Have I had to make some hard calls and do things that are uncomfortable? Yes, I have. Have I had to do some things that I said that I would never do? Yes, I have. But guess what? It's all because I said I want to please God. And when I look up in the morning and I wake up and I, I see what God has done around me and I can see that, that God has started businesses through, through me, when I see that I don't have to necessarily be dependent upon people giving or not giving or people's inconsistencies, when I see that God is saying, Carlos, I've created you to do many things and these many things are going to bless the people around you. He said, you just stay faithful. Don't worry about people that come and go. You just stay faithful. I am going to add value to you. Now, I remember being 25 and pastoring, and who wants to listen to a 25-year-old? I hadn't lived much. All I had was college stories, and I, I was starting out, didn't have a family, just uh, had a girlfriend, fiancé, and didn't have any kids and, and couldn't speak. But he said, you know what? Don't despise meager beginnings. Don't, don't. When people used to go, are you the youth? Who's the senior pastor? I am. I was insulted. So I went through phases of wearing robes, and I talked a different way, and I had a little hum in my voice and tried to get a little Martin Luther King, but that wasn't me. I tried to be quiet and still and reserved. I tried to dress a certain way. I tried to be what, what they were, and God said, that's not who you are. You got a little slang to you. You grew up listening to screw music. He said, use all of the stuff that you got. Speak to that generation. Speak to those people. Because guess what? It's, it's enough people speaking the other way. It's enough people that are just quoting scripture. It's enough people that are putting on facades. It's enough people that are, are front. You speak what I tell you to speak. And whether the people in front of you like it or not, you be faithful over the few things and I'll make you ruler over many. I'm going to tell you like this, it's no better master to serve than God. There is no greater master to serve than God. Not money, not women, not addictions. There is no greater master to serve than God. I tell you, 10 years in a position that I never wanted. I didn't want to be no pastor. I didn't even want to minister. I, I like helping people. 
But we said you have the heart. And since you have the heart, I'm going to bless you. Anybody need heart surgery today? Anybody's heart not in the right place? If it's not, today is the day that you can have surgery. Because out of the mouth flows the issues of the man's heart. It's out of the heart. It's out of the heart that real life flows to life. So if you need a heart transplant today, you can say, I do. You can, you can, you can, wherever you are, wherever season you're in, wherever you are, you can say, God, I need heart surgery because some things in my heart ain't right. I've been broken, I've been hurt, I've been bruised, God, but I need your diamond hands because I feel like I'm lost and lonely and left out. But I know my God is loving and he'll never leave me nor forsake. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how bad the baby mama drama is. I don't care how uh, screwed up it is. I don't care how messed up it is. God is faithful. And so all you have to do is say, pray this prayer when we say, Father, I confess with my mouth and I'm making you Lord over my life today. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you've made that declaration, it says that you will be saved. Doesn't mean that your addiction is going to go away. Doesn't mean that your bills are going to be paid tomorrow. Doesn't mean that you're not going to have to go through some hard times. Doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. But what he said, if you make me Lord, I will direct your path. That I will give you shade with my right hand. He says that I will be your help because I am the maker of heaven and earth. I will not let your foot slip. I will watch over you and I won't go to sleep on the job. I will be with you and I'll make sure that the elements don't harm you. And even by night, that the Lord will keep you from harm. That God will watch over your life. He'll watch your coming and he'll watch you going, both now, today, and forevermore. That's a promise from God, and I'm so glad that you were able to receive the promise. Now, you can receive something, but you can put it on your dresser at home. Or you can receive something and put it in your heart and walk around with it on a daily basis. Walk around with God's salvation, and he will make your path straight. Father, I thank you for the people. Thank you for blessing and I thank you for keeping them. Watch over them in season and out of season. Watch over them in loss and gain. Watch over them in all facets and everything that they've experienced. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, if you don't have a church and you're looking for a church to be a part of, we are virtual right now, but we will go back to the building. So, hey, like and subscribe on our YouTube page. Follow us on Facebook at Inspiration Church. Be a part of a great ministry where God is blessing us and keeping us and making sure that we are able to celebrate three years. We have a great man of God that's coming next week. It's uh, Pastor T.R. Williams. He was the one, first one to give me my first job as a, uh, as a, uh, a pastor minister. And he's going to be bringing the word. He saw me when I was playing football, and he's seen me through many different phases of my life. And I'm so excited to have him to come in and speak for him, uh, us next week. So make sure you tune in early for that. It is Communion Sunday. Communion Sunday. Josh, you got, you got a song? Go ahead and sing. You can sing it as we get ready. I will respond if you call me. I will respond. As he's singing. When it's offering time. Me, I will respond. Time for you to be able to sow into the kingdom. Is yours God has put on your heart to give. Three ways you can give. Fellowship one go. www.yourinspirationnow backslash donate. Dot com backslash donate. And also cash app dollar sign inspiration church. Whichever way you choose to give. We pray that God Mix our faith together, that he'll bless the kingdom and bless your house. 
that every vessel in your house will be full and running over. That your vats will be overflowing. I'm praying that God will continue to watch us. Thank you. It is now offering time at Inspiration Church, and I hope that you got your communion dropped off by your deacons and pastors and servants from the church. Go grab your communion. If you didn't get one, uh, then you need to be a part of a church and respond to the messages when they go out. But if you don't have the receptacle when the bread, just go get some crackers. Add some juice and partake with us. And this is what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take In the same way, also he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant, new covenant in my blood. Do this also as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. But I'm so thankful that we can proclaim his death, but we were raised to victory in his life. That every dead situation can come back to life. Take and drink. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, we thank you and we love you. May God continue to bless you and may he keep you and may he watch over you're coming and you're going. We love you and remember always to love, live, and to lead. God bless you guys. Peace.
Well, glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Carlos, for that amazing message. Isn't it a blessing that even when sometimes we don't feel God or it seems like we don't see God in our life, he's still keeping us? Hey, Pastor Carlos, congratulations and happy 10th year anniversary. Hey, guys, listen, if you love that message or any other messages that were preached or maybe you want to share some of our messages with someone else, please make sure you go and check out our YouTube. You can go to youtube.com backslash Inspiration Church. There you'll find all of our messages for the whole three years that Inspiration Church has been open. Hey guys, we want to make sure that you stay connected with us. We're doing some amazing things in the community. Our community initiative is going on right now. Right now we're writing people in prisons. Right now we're making sure that we're staying by their side in those hard times. And then we're getting ready to move forward to help out those who were hit by this hurricane in, in the cities of Cameron and the cities of Lake Charles. So please make sure you stay connected with us because we want to make sure that you are doing what we're doing. Hey guys, look, you see this shirt I have on? It's amazing, right? You've been seeing them. You've been loving them. Look, now they are open to you. Here we have our Inspiration Church logo shirt. You got the black with the white. Simple. You can wear it with everything. Something I like with that Inspiration logo hat. Then here we have our famous shirt which says, keep playing with Jesus and I'm going to cut your ear off. And that's what Peter said, but it's more like in the 2020 terms. Then here we have our Inspiration Church shirt. Here you see this is the long shirt. It's like you see me wear sometimes that Pastor Carlos always gets on me about. And then we have our Inspiration shirt here that you, Inspiration Church shirt here that you see that I have on. Hey guys, listen, we want to make sure that you go get some of these threads. We want to make sure that you get your inspiration apparel. So number one, people will know that you're a part of our love, live, and lead community. Hey guys, listen, right now is the worst time for me. Why? Because I have to separate from you at this moment. But please, please, please make sure you stay connected. Hey guys, even today at three o'clock, we can connect right now. We're doing a back to school drive. It's at Rollies. And so make Make sure you guys plan your schedules today at 3 p.m. Bring your kiddos. We're going to have an amazing, amazing, amazing and fun time. Hey, guys, I want to give you the blessing before I pray you out really quickly. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Dear Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we do praise you and thank you. Father, we thank you for allowing Inspiration Church to see three more years. And Father, we thank you that the number three is perfect harmony. And so Father, right now I just pray over the church, Father. I just pray, Father, that we continue to do your mission, that we continue to fulfill the purpose that you have set us here for, Father. I pray that in everything we do, we always have the mindset to love, live, and lead, which was the mind of Christ. Father, right now as we leave this place, we pray that we never leave your presence. Father, as we get ready to connect at three o'clock and as we get ready to go about our days, Father, I just pray that your presence is always with us and your protection goes before us. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We believe it and we receive it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, this is our third year anniversary, Pastor Carlos's 10th year anniversary, and you're my inspiration.